Hey everybody, welcome back. What would you say if I told you there's a game out there that plays like Stardew Valley meets Pokemon in a world that feels like a Studio Ghibli film? Well, uh, hopefully you would keep watching because that's exactly what Moonstone Island is, and it's incredibly addictive. In today's video, sponsored by the publisher Raw Fury, I'm going to run you through what my first week in the game looked like. And if you like what you see, there's a link in the video description and the pinned comment for you to pick it up on Steam yourself. The tutorial for this game actually does not contain a deceased relative granting us a random plot of land in a sleepy town, which is a nice departure from lots of the games I usually dive into. Instead, we spend some time learning about growing and harvesting crops with our father, who also teaches us about the spirits of the world and lets us pick one of our three starters in true catch em all tradition. Throughout the game, you'll have the ability to tame and befriend other spirits to fight with you, and you can have a little team of three at a time, but for now, we have to make a choice. All three of these little guys are adorable, but one of them is literally named Sheemp so there was really never an option for me. Father introduces us to the combat system of the game, which is a deck building system. Over the course of my time playing, I found that it was pretty easy to pick up, but there are a lot of layers to it, and just throwing more cards into your deck isn't always the best plan. After Sheep and I quickly trounce the tutorial battle, we meet our mother who is also alive. I swear, this is completely unheard of. A couple quick chores later and I'm in for a teary send off with my family. My mother and father are both crying, and I, an empath, cannot help but tear up a little bit as well since I'm now 11 minutes into recording and I've never felt closer to a set of pixels. But all good things must come to an end, and I'm ready to leave the tutorial on my broom. Off I go, and then there's a brief wait while the world is generated. I mentioned this is what my first week looked like, but yours could be pretty different since the over 100 islands in the game are procedurally generated and placed, which should help with some replayability. When the world is done generating, I immediately crash and break my broom, so I guess we won't be exploring too far from where we landed. Sheep and I run around looking for my gear before I pass out on the first night in true Leap-A-Lot tradition. In the morning, or I guess at noon the next day, I awake in a small room and Asono tells me a little bit about the town. Asono is one of a dozen or so NPCs that I've found so far that you can befriend, romance, and go on dates with, and she runs the tavern where we woke up. She says we can stay, but she'll charge us rent. Instead, I'm going to take our little tent and set up shop outside of town today, but not before meeting everyone else I can. Oh, she also found all my tools for me, which is really handy since I passed out before finding everything. I ended up meeting pretty much everyone today, from Guyana, the pretty brusque conservatory employee, to Tobin, the fishing shop owner, to Farah, the surprisingly forward blacksmith. All the NPCs are really adorable, and one cool thing about them is that you can check the relationship page to check out their pronouns. Guyana, who I just talked to, uses she, they, for example, which I just think is neat. Other than that, I ended up spending the rest of my second, I guess, day on the island, filling out my map and exploring all over. I found a scary cave with an enormous construct, for example, and immediately ran away like the little coward I am. I also crafted a balloon today, which I'll have to use to explore the different islands, temples, and dungeons, at least until I can rebuild my broom. I've seen that there's also a glider later in the game, which sounds awesome, but I'm not sure we'll be able to get a hold of that in my first week here. Toward bedtime, I spend some time clearing the land for a little homestead, and I plop down my tent and craft a shipping crate before I pass out in the mud again. Also, I really like how sheep just follows me everywhere. There's a fire-breathing sheep monster just hustling around the town, and everybody seems pretty chill about it. I like that in a community. The next day, I run straight into the cave that I randomly uncovered outside my front door. I have a quest for some copper ore, and I want to do some monster fighting, too. I bravely, bravely run away from a 3v1 fight though before finding out that you can just reload into the fight with new spirits, and it won't be the exact same. I kind of forgot everything Dad told me though, so I just annihilate everything instead of even trying to catch a single spirit at this point. Whoops. With loot in hand, I head into town and knock out a couple beginner fetch quests and meet the last remaining NPCs I missed yesterday, like Ophelia and her sick tattoo and Quill who works at the tavern with Osono. Everyone in town is so cute, I don't even know who to chase after, to be honest. I'll probably go for Cleo, though, because she's got big curly hair, she's a historian, and she seems like a sweetheart. I also head back into the dungeon I ran away from yesterday. There are more fights in here, and I'm starting to get a rhythm for things. When you break the enemy's armor, you have a bit of free time to do extra damage, and the enemies can't attack you. Sheep also has the ability to burn things and cause damage at the top of their turn. I'll find a couple ways later to stack those things and do some pretty crazy damage over time, but we're both still babies in this dangerous world. Also, since I have the memory of a goldfish with ADHD, I struggle through the basic warp puzzles in here, and since I don't really have a solid grasp on how the balloon works yet, I turned around without finishing the place today. On the 4th, I actually put some of my farming knowledge to good use and planted some crops outside my tent. I can use these to recover stamina, tame spirits, and later I'll be able to craft potions with my produce too. And speaking of taming spirits, I actually remembered that I should be doing that today. 
I headed back into the dungeon to tame a Dusty today, but apparently you can't tame spirits who are dizzy, as in you've broken their armor. That's fine, I guess, but it meant that I just ended up having to tame the second one I ran into since I kind of accidentally killed the first one instead of letting it wake up. Anyway, welcome to the team, Dusty. I've only had you for three minutes, but if anything happened to you, well, yeah, you guys know the joke. Now that I have a sacrifice, I mean a second friend, I decided to go ahead and take on the first boss. These guys are tough. They have so much more armor than a normal enemy that wearing them down is brutal. I did not think we were going to take this one home, but the team somehow scraped by with both members blessedly surviving, though Sheep ended the battle with only one HP. But still, with all that experience, Dusty leveled all the way from 1 to 6, which means my total party level more than doubled after that fight. I probably made a mistake fighting that guardian so early. Afterward though, I found an Ando tree, which gave me a permanent stamina boost, which I think is pretty neat. Not too much else happened today, but I somehow convinced Fella to go on a date with me tomorrow, even though I've spoken to her like twice, so that's cool. I spent the rest of my day mining for more ore and smelting bars in my little pocket dimension of a tent. Day 5 was a rainy day, which is pretty cool I guess. I tried to go find more spirits to tame in the dungeon I cleared yesterday, but there was nothing in there today, so I set off for a new sky island for the very first time. The balloon is... slow. I ended up finding a temple on the very first island I made it to, though. There are only four of these in the game, so that was a pretty good find. I met this weirdo outside and had to offer up a couple random items before making my way inside the spring temple. I fought a log, which I just said I wanted to tame spirits, but immediately forgot, I guess. But then I got to another offering, and this time I needed ingots. I didn't have everything I needed, though, so that was it for me at the temple today. I headed back home and picked up a fishing rod from Tobin so I could make sure I didn't miss my date later that night. I really like the minigame here. It's basically just keep the fish inside your little ring, which isn't too much different than say Stardew or Coral Island or Roots of Pacha or whatever, but I had a lot of fun with this unique iteration of it. But soon, it was time for my very first date. Farrah met me on the docks at 8pm and we chatted for a bit. She says she's shy, but I don't really buy it. Since I'm actually a romantic genius, I told her that we should dig a really big hole in the sand as our very first date activity. She loved that, obviously, and that ended my day, actually. I didn't expect that. I still had like another five hours of work I could have done. Guess I will never go on a date again. I leveled up in a couple things for the first time that night and got to take a look at the skill trees. There's one for just about everything you do in the game, and I just threw some points into increasing my light radius, which was probably a bad idea, and I took a perk that let me talk to people a fourth time. I haven't really mentioned this, but when you initiate dialogue with an NPC, you can go into a second menu and either just talk, try to joke, or even flirt. You can do a total of three things at first, but Fast Talker let me get a fourth one. They all have percentages that actually work though, so I've just been chatting mostly. It's a pretty cool system, and I'm sure the perk trees will change how you can approach it. I headed back into the temple on the 6th with my ingots and headed deeper into the temple where I ran into a stump, again. Except this one was a boss spirit, so I couldn't tame it. Whatever, man. I put down the long log, and I stepped up to the next donation. I need a clay and a moonstone, though. The moonstones are pretty rare, and I need them to eventually craft a new broom, so I wasn't sure I wanted to give one up. Clay, though? Actually, I haven't even seen clay. I went home and dug around for some, but I never did find any. Instead, I headed south to find a new island that had another dungeon. And inside, I tamed the coolest thing I have ever seen in my life. Meet Fishbo. He's literally a fish in a bowl with legs. I love him. The guardian of this dungeon stood no chance against my newly filled out team, and we swept through the whole dungeon in one day, collecting another permanent stamina buff on our way out. I couldn't figure out why I was missing a chest and eventually just left, but while I'm writing this script, I know exactly where it is. I should have followed these arrows to a fake wall, and I guarantee there'd be a chest behind it. Shucks. I went exploring on the 7th again, and I learned a terrible truth about the world. Since I hadn't built a spirit barn back home, I couldn't tame any more spirits. Distressing. This meant that this sandcastle, which would be the perfect addition to my team, had to be let go. Goodbye, sand crashel. I'll never forget you. Before we move on here, let me also show you a fight where I can kind of elaborate on how you can stack different abilities. I fought this float thingy, which was a boss, so I couldn't tame it, even if I wanted to, which I did. Anyway, Sheemp has some upgraded burn abilities by now, so I can stack 14 burn on the enemy, then another 14, then I can double that burn. At the top of their turn, the enemy then takes 56 damage. That's pretty wild. It doesn't always work out perfectly like that, but that's just an example of having compounding abilities in your deck. Fishbow and Dusty I pretty much built to just pull more cards and make them free to use. 
so I'm almost always stacking burn on targets and crushing through combat pretty easily. So yeah, combat is really fun and unique in this game. I've never played anything quite like it, but I really got sucked into it. I tackled another dungeon on the next island I found today and learned about those fake walls I just mentioned a minute ago. I didn't have time to get back to the other island before bed, so I had to settle with merely smacking down the boss of this dungeon for now. This guardian was also no big deal now that I had a pretty solid grasp on the combat mechanics. We actually won here without taking any damage, which gives us a little extra experience. Neat. I didn't realize it, but I've been picking up these memory shards after each guardian fight, and I ran into their owner on the next island over. This uh, magic man lives in a chicken house, and I can give him these shards to do something. I, I don't know. No idea, to be honest. But I can also ask him on a date, which is kind of hilarious. Come make a sand castle with me, Mr. Eldritch Horror. Before my last day of this first week ended, I really wanted to finish up a quest I had gotten from the beginning of the game. I wanted my broom back. So, after finding another moonstone, I headed back home and ran over to my moonstone enchanter and... needed a little more wood, actually. But after that, I crafted my broom. And oh my goodness, it's glorious. Instead of using stamina to float like on the balloon, you use it to charge up before takeoff. And then the charge drains slowly over time. This is so much faster that I feel like it really opens up a new avenue for exploration. Alas, my week was over, so I'll have to explore further across the skies in another video, or maybe a stream. So that was the end of my time in Moonstone Island. I love the vibes of all the enemies in this game, not to mention the music and the puzzles and pretty much everything. You would never know that it was made by just three devs and that it's their very first game. If you had fun with this, check out the link in the video description to snag a copy for yourself. If you're watching this before September 26, you can also pick it up at a 15% discount. Either way, thanks for checking this one out, and I'll see you in the next video.